What have I actually learnt from doing all these things is the question as the answer to which perhaps I could tell you a few things that could lead you in a certain way if you want to be inspired or learn from it. How I understand leadership and how leadership is important in everything that you do. We've been doing this Verbattle activity for 10 years now. The very reason I started Verbattle, the biggest debating activity in the country, which is being recognized so by other debating organizations all over the world, one day I was just going through the net to look for a school somewhere in Europe to partner with. So, because I was looking for a partnership, then I was searching for any kind of an organization that could put peoples of countries together or an organization that was connecting people. Apart from the organizations run by the UN, the only other organizations that I was able to see as showing any interest in bringing people together were these debating organizations. There were all these big championships in Europe, in the US, and Australia, and even in Africa, and even in Bangladesh. But I could not see a single major debating organization in the country which claims to be the biggest democracy in the world. But then I understood, perhaps for the Saudi state of our politicians and leaders in even the public space, most often when you see them on TV, conducting themselves so badly in assemblies and parliament, we don't even think for a moment because they never got the training to speak well, to know the importance of debate, to responsibly speak, responsibly listen, responsibly deliberate, responsibly understand dissent, responsibly stand and accept somebody else's opinion when the opinion is different from yours. So then I thought it was important for me to do something because there is something in this country that we always talk about. We say things are bad but we are always waiting for somebody else to do something about it. I thought, instead of actually complaining, let me actually do it. And when I started this particular activity, I got a lot of uh, brickbats being thrown at me because people started telling, this kind of a debate is a different format altogether. There are about six different formats in the world which are extremely famous and accepted by everyone. But this format is unique, new, and perhaps it's not something that the students all over the world would accept. But let me tell you, there are only two ways. Either you convince the other person or you accept defeat. Because I've always believed, even through media, even through everything that I've done, that if you have to survive, you have to win. And winning doesn't come because somebody else allows you to win. It's because you know if you don't win, you don't survive. So I fought, fought, fought. I'm now reaching the 10th year world over debating organizations have accepted it. Why am I actually telling this to you? Because in this country, when we talk about leadership, we don't have examples of great leadership. When I was listening to the inaugural speech of Obama the first time he became the president, I had tears in my eyes, basically because I was just thinking how great a person can be just by speaking so beautifully, speaking so perfectly, speaking so efficiently, speaking from his heart but so correctly, so professionally and, such a, and in such a way that the whole world would admire. Do you have such examples in this country? Why we don't have examples in this country? Because we know about all that we need in this country but we don't know how to actually go about it. Why? A simple thing, if we throw something on the road, we want somebody else to pick it up. If we finish the job, we want somebody else to clear it. We eat, we want somebody else to wash the plate. The problem is that we have not even mastered ourselves. We want somebody else to do our jobs. We want to master other people. We want to actually enslave other people. We want to put down other people and get other people to listen to us. I ask a very simple question. How many of you listen to yourselves? I'm sure most of you can proudly say that you don't listen to yourselves. Most of you don't obey yourselves. Most of you don't follow your conscience. Most of you don't follow your instructions. There's a big problem with discipline that I keep telling very young students when I go and conduct these bar battle club classes. I tell them, how do you know that you're a good leader? They say, because when people don't listen to us, no. You tell in the night that you need to wake up at 5.30 in the morning. At 5.30 in the morning you say, it's okay, I can wake up at 7 o'clock. You can't 
follow yourself. You don't accept your own leadership in your own life. If you can't accept the leadership of your own self in your own life, what kind of a leadership are you talking about? Leadership means just going at the helm of a rally and expecting other people to say jai to you or, you know, you know, getting some people to listen to your koto and, you know, obey you. Or is it basically to be an example that the other people look at you and emulate and want to follow you? People talking about communication once again. Everybody talks about, you know, excellence in speaking and public speaking and influencing people with speaking and all. I always take this example of Mahatma Gandhiji. Mahatma Gandhiji was not an effective speaker at all because he had a weak voice and he did not raise his voice. He was not into dramatics. He actually spoke in a very, very unattractive manner. But people loved him. People wanted to follow him. Why? He walked the talk. He believed in what he said. And he followed his own words. And that's why we could follow him. He didn't tell other people how they had to follow him. But he showed the world that he was capable of following his own words. He was capable of following his own principles. He was able to actually go by what he told the world. That is why we thought there was an example which we could emulate. Today, there are so many people that may be, you know, leaders in uh, media, leaders in business circles, leaders in uh, politics, leaders in so many other spaces. But today, the problem is that we are constantly watching them for what? Because we think, like today, I wanted to actually write this comment in one of the news websites. They, were, they had written something about the IIT students having uh, taken up by some of the companies for a certain amount of salary per annum. I said, these are the kind of articles that actually spoil our students because that's such a small number of students who can achieve such a thing. Because what is the great example of giving only examples of Narayan Murthy and Nanda Nilekani and uh, uh, so many other few people? Because for a country of more than one billion, these few examples are bad examples because 99.9999999% of people can't become that. And they all will die disappointed. Let's give them realistic examples. Let, let's give them simple leadership examples. Why? There is a leader in your family. There's a leader in your community. There's a leader among you. There's a leader in your society. There's a leader in your workspace. There's a leader in your field. There's a leader in the vicinity. There are so many good examples of people who have done great things within the limitations of the localized space that they were able to achieve in. You can't become Narayan Murthy and even if you have to become Narayan Murthy, you will become Narayan Murthy no matter what. Not because you looked at Narayan Murthy from morning to evening and wanted to become Narayan Murthy. You can't become Mark Zuckerberg just because you want to become Mark Zuckerberg. You become Mark Zuckerberg because you had it in you to become Mark Zuckerberg. I'll tell you this beautiful story I listened to very, very long time ago, perhaps when I was quite young. There is a ballet troupe that comes to a town somewhere in the US. This could be a story, but it's a fantastic story. And uh, there's this young girl who goes and watches the ballet, and she's extremely impressed. She wants to become a ballet dancer after watching the show. She goes backstage, she meets the master, she tells him, look sir, I want to become a ballet dancer. He says, no, no, you can't become a ballet dancer. She goes back, she comes the next day with the parents, she watches the show, she's enthralled, she really wants to become a ballet dancer, she runs backstage and she tells him, look, I really feel I need to become a ballet dancer. He says, no, no, you can't become a ballet dancer. She comes back, she leads her life, she marries, she has children, she's actually moved to a different town. The same troupe comes to the other town where she's living with her family. And she thinks about the wonderful experience she had. She runs with her children. She watches the whole ballet. And in the end, she feels so disappointed. She was not a ballet dancer. She had not become a ballet dancer. She runs backstage and she tells this person, look, I came running to you backstage. I begged you. 
if you could make me a ballet dancer. You said I could not become. If you had actually allowed me to become a ballet dancer, I would have become such a great ballet dancer. He said, no, no, you could have never become a ballet dancer. She said, how could you say so surely? How are you so assured about me not being able to become a ballet dancer? He said, no, you could have never become a ballet dancer because, because why? Because if you wanted to become a ballet dancer, no matter what I said to you, you'd have still become a ballet dancer. If the whole world tells you you can't become Mark Zuckerberg, why would you want to become Mark Zuckerberg? There's already a Mark Zuckerberg. Why would you want to become Narayan Murthy? There's already a Narayan Murthy. Become yourself. The problem is that I want to become him, I want to become her. There are already people like that. The world is looking for new people. Facebook is over. Let's look for a new thing. People going to the moon, to Mars is over. Somebody else is already dreaming about it. You think about going to Pluto or to our next galaxy. We're only limiting ourselves to our imagination because it is romantic. It's nice to actually have big dreams because you feel big by having big dreams, by knowing 100% they're unrealistic because you somewhere can tell yourself, look, at least I dreamed. You want to absolve yourself of that sin, saying that, oh, you didn't even dream? No, I dreamed. What did you dream? I wanted to become Mark Zuckerberg. And where does it end? It ends with just dreaming. Like long time ago, this um, noted celebrated journalist in Tamil Nadu called Cho Ramaswamy, he went to uh, the celebration of the final last day of a 10th standard class. So he was talking to all the students and he said, some of you are going to become doctors. They all clapped. And he said, some of you are going to become engineers. They all clapped. Some of you are going to become scientists, they all clapped. Then he said, some of you are just going to end up clapping. So what is the problem here? It is basically, we always look at the world, but we don't look at ourselves. I'll give you a very small example. When I, when I wanted to do an English show on Canada television, you can imagine almost everyone told me, who is going to watch it? Do you know what I told them? I don't know who is going to watch it, but I'll make them watch it. Who is going to watch it? Is there somebody who actually comes and says, I'm going to watch your show. If you're going to do a show, it's like somebody saying that if I buy a cow, I'm going to have milk, I'm going to sell the milk, I'm going to make money, I'm going to buy more cows, I'm going to have a dairy farm. There's a beautiful story, particularly about misconceptions. This man comes and tells his wife, look, I'm going to buy a cow. And the next day, this woman buys six pots. She says, five pots, one for milk, one for curds, one for buttermilk, one for ghee, and one for leftover milk or something like that. And he says, what is the six pot for? He says, with the leftover buttermilk, you know, I thought I would give it to my, you know, mother's home. This guy gets so upset, he starts beating his wife. The neighbor comes running, he asks, what's wrong? He says, look, this lady is planning to give the leftover buttermilk to her mother of the cow that I'm going to buy. So that guy actually picks up a stick from a corner of the neighbor and starts beating up this guy. So he says, why? He says, the cow that you're going to buy comes to graze grass in my field so I'm beating you today itself this is the kind of dreams we have absolutely unrealistic first of all I ask very simple questions to people when I go to conduct these war battle classes about leadership I ask them do you know how much you can jump do you know how much you can endure do you know how far your voice travels do you know how many people like you do you know that what offends the most about you do you know what people like the most about you? You know nothing about yourself, but you know about Aishwarya Rai, you know about Salman Khan, you know about that walker guy who died. You know about everybody, but you know so little about yourself. And that is your guarantee to failure. Because you're doing everything without that person who is central to your life missing his place. You're talking, you have everything in place, but that guy who is the most central to your life, 
who it is you